I get a lot of negative comments as to why I share my husband in the condition that he is in. Never judge someone until you know their story. That's why it's always important to have an advocate, someone to be your voice. My husband, Josh, attempted suicide November 2nd of 2018. He used his shoestring to hang himself. He was brought to the hospital. He was still breathing, so he was in a coma. They said, basically, he's in a vegetative state. He only functions with the brain stem, so that is blinking, breathing, coughing. He does turn his head and all of that, but that's reflexes. I had to sign the consents to put the trach in the peg tube, which is his feeding, to keep him alive. Right after Josh got out of the hospital and went to the nursing home he was in, he was much more alert. He did cry at one point. Josh has smiled also, but as of the last year, I have not seen anything like that from him. I don't even know if those were reflexes or emotions. I installed cameras in his room so that I'd be able to monitor him throughout the day. I do have the motion detection that goes off. He has only set it off one time and it was when he was having a very bad seizure. I've been posting on social media about Josh and throughout this whole process. This to me is no way for someone to be left and this is the stuff that you guys don't see. There's no progress has been made. I've only seen more decline. I'm struggling and fighting to try to do what is best for Josh. I disagree with my mother-in-law, Kelly, with me wanting to bring Josh home with hospice and stop his feedings to let him pass peacefully in the comfort of our own home. I was trying to bring Josh home about a month ago. Kelly threatened to take legal action and hospice would not admit him. Kelly wants to keep Josh alive for her comfort. She's being selfish and vindictive towards me. She has done nothing but say evil things to me. I truly feel this is what Josh would want. I just don't see any chance that Josh will come out of this. There's nothing that's going to bring him back. Well, joining us virtually is Megan. Now, it's been two years that uh, Josh has been in a persistent vegetative state, so there's been no improvement that you've seen over a two-year period, correct? No, no improvement. Um, it seems to be just, I see less. And do you think Josh would have wanted to be kept alive in the condition that he's in right now? Absolutely not. Uh -huh. And wh why do you say that? I don't feel that anyone would want to be left this way. And that's the question that I ask is, when it comes to a decision like this, um, he's not enjoying anything in life. He's he's total bed bound. Um, I don't believe he's aware of his surroundings. You've spent hours at his bedside day after day after day. So you've watched to see how he's responding, how he reacts to the environment. Uh, this isn't just some drive-by opinion. You've, you've been there to see him and, and watch what he does. Yes, um, I've, I've spent a lot of time with him up until COVID, but yes, um, also with the camera. I, I've seen from the beginning till now, so I've been able to see what he showed from start to what he shows now. He got into this condition. Uh, this was self-inflicted, correct? Yes. So tell he, me how he, this happened. Um, he attempted suicide November 2nd of 2018 when he was incarcerated with his shoestrings um, in the bathroom while he was in booking. So he wasn't there but a few hours. Hey, if you related to that video, then click subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications of more just like that. You won't want to miss what I have coming up.